Con. Today is Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. Yes, I'm still working from home during the pandemic, and this is my coffee break. I get a coffee break when I'm at work, and since I'm working at home, I get a coffee break as well. But today, I have a different beverage. I got a special treat. I have a Dunkin' Donuts. I have to look to see exactly how I took it. An iced decaf hazelnut coffee with more cream than you can shake <laughs> as to get. Mocha swirl. It's really, really mocha -y and to Splenda. <laughs> so this is a special beverage and the, unfortunately I've been working on it for a little while and the ice is melted, but it's still nice and cold and it's good and yummy. So I would love to know what you two are drinking on this wonderful Thursday morning. Mm. That's good. Uh, it's not Earl Grey good, but that's good. good. Good morning, Rob. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you are well. Um, would love to know what you are drinking. Are you having any sort of fancy coffee with you today? Or maybe a little bit something different? I don't know. We got a lot of cool things, though, to talk about today. This is just really good, though. Good morning, Mark. Thank you for joining us today. So we have quite a lineup of stuff um, to kind of cover. We have um, instructions on how to drink tonight's Netflix watch party. We're watching Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. So I'll go over that. We also have some news about Two Fat Lardies that I want to share. Some progress about uh, MDF kits that I'm doing. And then we have some fun stuff as well. Rob says he has a San Antonio blend with his same hand solo cup. I love that hand solo cup. Um, it's just that's wonderful. <laughs> you can't go wrong with hand solo, can you? Now the question is, is he encased in carbonite? Or is he just like gunslinger hand solo? Like, I don't know. Is he like, I just smoked Grito. Yeah, I don't care. But I did. Uh, so, it, I don't know. I'd love to see what this cup looks like. And I gotta say, I, this is just, this is too, I should put this down because I'll just spend the whole thing drinking. You'll be like, he's not saying anything. He's just sipping out of a straw. Mm. That would be for an ASMR video, which Adrian won't let me do because he says they're weird and creepy. Uh, but ASMR is big. I could just sit there, I could get real close, I could just sip my drink and slurp it, and people like that kind of stuff, so it helps them sleep. I don't know. So let's start off with some news from the Two Fat Lardies, okay? Uh, so I want to make sure that I pull this up, and it seems that the post office near where they live, or at least near where the materials are, happens to be um, shutting down as of Friday. Um, their Friday, so it's probably happening a lot earlier than ours. Uh, and that means that basically today's the last day. You want to buy anything from them, and you're buying physical stuff, go to twofatlardies.com, T-O-O-F-A-T-L-A-R-D-I-E-S.com, and buy it now. They have Chain of Command on sale, and I do believe that they're going to be doing Sharps Practice on sale as well buy it now this does not of course impact any of the pdf downloads or the digital downloads so you can go ahead you can get that it's not a problem but if you want physical stuff act fast just go ahead and do it get the discount and get your stuff because um you're gonna be sol <laughs> as it were uh so uh they are highly recommended that people do it now they're trying to find an alternative so in case people still want to get lardy's stuff direct from them that you can do it but they haven't worked out anything just yet. And of course, they're in lockdown, so they gotta be careful as well. Uh, Rob says, Sally Forth and UK is still shipping. And I know there were questions about um, the other day about what companies in the UK is still shipping. So uh, we did talk about that a little bit. Uh, here in the States, the Hobby Bunker, which is my favorite historical miniatures gaming store that's near me. <laughs> I know that sounds like a lot of caveats. Uh, they've officially had to send all their employees home. So the owner, Matt, is still fulfilling um, mail orders and things like that. And they still have all the specials going that we talked about before. Uh, it's free shipping over 100 in the special code you use. If you're in New England and you give them a call and the order is like 50 or more, you get free shipping. If you live on the North Shore of Massachusetts, uh, Matt will drop stuff off for free on his way home. Uh, he's doing all this kind of stuff. Uh, and he needs boxes. So if you're in the area please get in touch with thehobbybunker.com and let them know that you have boxes. They'll take Amazon boxes or whatever, but they need boxes to ship because they're shipping a lot of stuff. So that's really, really cool. Um, I 
gonna hold up on the Netflix watch party stuff just because I want to get a few more people into the live area to um, just to see this while I talk about it um, but I'm not gonna wait too too long so on um actually on a variety of social media platforms TSR games had this really cool question that they put up and I thought it was amazing so I'd love to know what all of you have to say for the answer to it and their question is what are your favorite books about gaming books about the history art design and playing of tabletop games and of course they are focused on role-playing games but any tabletop games so I would love to know what your favorite books are about tabletop games so not like rule systems or whatever but uh, ones with the history ones that show art from it ones that are talking about how to design a game any of that kind of stuff so what are your favorites uh, put it in the chat if you're watching on YouTube comment below you can send us an email Jonathan at wargamingrecon.com and if you send an email we'll probably put it in an upcoming podcast episode or on another uh, <laughs> pandemic coffee break oh my goodness it's just it's crazy so that's a thing um, and it just it's really interesting to me um, good morning Nathan uh, Rob says have some great station zebra I'm ordering soon so that's from Sally Forth and Nathan says hand solo cup so Rob has a great hand solo mug for his coffee and Rob um, Nathan says he forgot his coffee upstairs he's gonna be right back I'm just pulling my sleeves down because and I got fluff you can't see but it's yellow fluff from the kids Jeez, I don't know what they were doing but I'm like part big bird now I can't get rid of it Jeez, go away big bird go away fly <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so you get your coffee, man. Even I'm actually drinking coffee today. Decaf iced hazelnut coffee with tons of mocha, tons of cream, and some Splenda. Or as Adrian would say, I'm having my dessert. <laughs> uh, last year when we went up to Huzzah, uh, we parked and like we always stop for coffee on the way up. Um, and so I treat us to coffee because he, he tends to drive and I'm like, well, you know, you're really nice. Let me do coffee. So I take care of the tolls and I, I, I put money towards gas and I left my coffee in the, uh, in his truck and we went in and then like the next one who came out and we were going to coffee and I was like, do you think my coffee's still good? And he said, well, if you drink it like a man, you know, if I drink it black, uh, then yeah, but with all the stuff I put into it, probably not. But you know what? I took it and it was just fine. So I, I drank, I'm not recommending you do that all the time. Uh, but it was just fine for me, so I don't know. I, I guess it was cold enough overnight, and the ice, there was still ice in there? My goodness, and that was in May, in May. And good morning, Pete, how are you? And so I have a tendency of going to a convention, and all the way up, I stop and get a beverage, and I have a tendency to leave it in the car. So I did it again at Total Con, too, this year. Uh, and I stopped, and I got a beverage, and I'm drinking it, and I knew I was gonna leave it in the car, and I, that I'd like come out at some point, and be like, oh, what am I supposed to do with this? So I, I get to the total car, and I'm sitting in the car in the parking lot at the hotel, and I'm like, I have probably about this much left of my beverage, so it's like half of a medium, and I'm just, I'm, I know I should go in and I should get my room and all that kind of stuff, but I'm sitting there because I don't want it to go to waste, and I'm still like, I'm thirsty, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just, I'm working my way through, so you just hear a slurp. For like a good 20 minutes and that's what i'm doing waiting and waiting and waiting and um it's just it's ridiculous sorry i just got some spam on my phone for messages no my credit score has not been updated liar liar pants on fire uh so i would suggest if any of you get beverages on your way to events or conventions you know when we have them again but not now uh, make sure you you plan it out so that you get the size in which you can drink before you get there or bring it in with you i tend to not bring them in because i have so much stuff that i bring in with me a lot of gear and everything uh so why don't we talk about the netflix watch party so i want to make sure i just walk everyone through how this is gonna go so tonight on april 2nd at some point probably after seven o'clock because we put the kids to bed from like we do dinner at 5-ish or 5.30, and then the kids start bedtime routine at like 6, 6 or so, and at 6.30, we read stories, to, I read stories to them, and then they're supposed to be in bed by 7, so sometime after 7, which is when I'll probably be having my dinner, but sometime after 7, I'll post on our Facebook page, 
and I'll put it on Twitter and on the fan club page and everything. So I'll post the link at some point to the watch party. Now, in order to fully enjoy this, you need to make sure you have one Google Chrome. So if you don't have that as your web browser, you can get it. It's really easy to get and it's free and you probably have it and just don't think you do, but I bet you do. But if not, you literally just go to Google and type in Google Chrome and there'll be a link. You can click on it. You can download it. It's free. It's a really good browser. I would recommend you use it and just get in and going. And then after you have that, uh, and you might already have it installed, but after you have it installed and everything's good to go, then you want to go to netflixparty.com and you want to get, uh, you click on the button that says install Netflix party. It's in like the top right of the screen. This is a free plugin for Google Chrome. So you get those, make sure you have these before you join the party tonight. So get these done sometime today, right? So that when I give you the link, all you have to do is one, you click on the link and a tab or a window opens up on your screen in Chrome, presumably. And it'll be for the movie we're watching tonight, which is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And then in the top right of your web browser, uh, you, you'll see somewhere like up near the top, the address bar, where you type in like the addresses for websites you go into, but to the right of it, there's going to be a little, little icon that says N and P. It'll be grayed out. Click on it. And then it'll refresh uh, the Netflix screen that you're watching. And what it'll do is it'll sync you up exactly with where we are in the movie. And it'll also give you a chat window over on the right. So that way you can talk with everyone. And it's a lot of fun. So we'll be doing that. The film viewing starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. So make sure you go ahead and do that. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me. I'm happy to walk you through stuff and I'll be around online and doing that. So it'll be a lot of fun. We'll watch Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Um, and then I want to share I have some gaming stuff, but first hmm, coffee. Um, first there's something funny uh, I saw. So over at Warhammer hyphen community.com, they're ranking the top 20 <laughs> Primaris lieutenants uh, from Space Marines for 40k. And they were just, they were humorous to me. So I thought I would run down them a share. So they count down. So number 20 is the dead lieutenant. Only in death does duty end if you're a quitter. This little lieutenant that could is bravely laying siege to Abaddon's foot cunningly positioning himself under it in order to trip the fiend and so they have pictures of each of them which is really funny i'm not going to read the descriptions for all of them but number 19 is a dark imperium lieutenant number 18 is dark imperium lieutenant two <laughs> number 17 is lieutenant tomaron it says <laughs> this one i like uh definitive proof that being a primary space marine doesn't stop you having gorgeous hair <laughs> He really has an interesting hair there. Uh, so that's funny. Oh, and if you want to um, join along with me, I have a link to this in the chat on Facebook Live. So you can just click that and follow along with me so you can see the pictures because they're pretty funny. Number 16 for all of you Dark Angels fans out there is Lieutenant Zachariah. Uh, definitive uh, <laughs> proof that being a primary space marine doesn't stop you having terrible secrets. Dun, dun, dun. Trader Marines, just saying. Number 15 is Lieutenant Funko. It's literally a Funko Pop head. 14 is the Power Sword Lieutenant, who's holding his sword up eagles are. <laughs> uh, like that. Number 13 is Phobos Lieutenant. What's better than a Primaris Lieutenant? The one behind you right now. He deserves a higher place on this list, but is lurking here at number 13 in order to avoid detection. Number 12 is a Space Wolves Primaris Battle Leader. That's one gorgeous looking model, I gotta say. He has this great axe, fantastic action pose. Just, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's really, really nice. 11 is Lieutenant Calcius. He's exclusive to the collectible magazine Warhammer 40k Conquest. Says he has a great looking sword and an even sweeter hairdo. And I gotta say, his hair is a little, I don't know, it's weird to me. But it's almost Roman-esque. Or at least to me, it feels ancient Roman-ish to me. So, I don't know. Number 10 is the 500th store opening lieutenant. One I'm sure no one was able to get. Uh, number 9 is 30th anniversary veteran sergeant. 
who I'm sure is no one was able to get, but he says, it's been like two years. This chap is definitely a lieutenant by now. Eight is Phobos Lieutenant. Two, Lieutenant Harder. Number seven is Twitter Lieutenant. <laughs> Primaris lieutenants often find themselves in the galaxy's fiercest war zones, endlessly holding the line against thousands of the lost and the damned. This one keeps vigil over a Twitter account, which is pretty much the same thing. I, tell you, I feel that way sometimes. <laughs> you ever hop on social media and you just feel like you're being attacked nonstop no matter what you do? And I kind of felt like that when I was uh, promoting the uh, episode that just came out of the podcast with the Gordon Firemark. And everyone was like, well, no, this is what trademark is and copyright is and IP. And this is what you can do and how you can recast or this is what you cannot do. And I was like, this is why we did the episode. Just listen to the darn episode. And would you believe people are like, I don't want to listen to it. Why would I listen to that? So you could make sure you know what's legal and what's not, you goons. Uh, so that's why I turned off notifications so I didn't see any of that. Number six, that one lieutenant you probably kit bashed. Number five, perfectly ordinary lieutenant. We're sure we can trust him is what it says. Number four is Lieutenant Amulius. Uh, number three is Lieutenant Marnius Kalgar. I love a nice Marnius Kalgar fig. Number two is Lieutenant Reboot Guliman. And number one is Lieutenant You. You see, the greatest Primaris lieutenant was inside us all along. How satisfying. How contrived. Yeah, they're funny. Good morning, Jamie. You just missed me going through a bunch of 40K content. You'll have to come back and watch. Shame on you. And I even talked about Dark Angels. Those traitorines. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I just had something stuck in my throat there. That's all. It's just it was a little bit of mm -mm. so, uh, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, the top twenty primaris um, lieutenants and top secrets, uh, best books about gaming. So I'd love to know what you all think about those. Um, hi. Um, I'm going to butcher your name, so I won't do it, but I will say, Mr. Tavares, thank you so much for watching with your wife. I hope you are all safe down there in Brazil, uh, and hope you are all well. Uh, really, I'm I'm honored that you're here watching. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I would um, try to bust out some non-English, but I would butcher that as well, so we won't do it at all. Uh, and I'm... I'm actually quite terrible because i am of portuguese descent and i cannot speak a word of portuguese someday someday i will do that i hope uh let's talk about some hobby progress so this is something i worked on a while ago and this was actually a giveaway uh from things from the basement nathan says world famous uh world famous what nathan uh well you're swan let's go back to the uh, thing that i got was a giveaway Oh, not really a giveaway, but when you go to a convention and you buy stuff from Things of the Basement, they give you extra stuff. Uh, so, packs of gravestones, <laughs> which I have um, clearly primed. I did them gray because they're going to be stone. And I'm just, I'm not sure what to do with these. Now, I could just take these and I could individually base them. I could put them as a trio, like on, you know, a round base or something as like a scenic thing. But my question is, do I leave them plain as stone where people's names aren't written? Do I just do squiggly lines, like in white or something, to try to give the impression that there's writing? Or do I send these off to someone who can really paint and have them freehanded for me? And that, I don't know. Uh, good morning, Corey. Oh, my face is world famous. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. I have the perfect face for podcasting, don't I? Because <laughs> who wants to see this? Nobody. No one wants to see me. And yet, apparently you do. So, what do I know? <laughs> mm. So, gravestones. Love to know what you think. Do I use them as is? Do I just do squiggly lines for writing? Or do I send them off to someone who can actually freehand and put some writing on their hair lies, so-and-so? Um, do I do fake names, real names, historical people? Do I put myself on? Is that bad karma? Uh, to put my own name on here and make up dates or something. I don't know. I really do not know. One thing I do know is these would be perfect, I think, for a project Mark Huskins is working on for a consecrated graveyard. Don't you think, Mark? I think you 
would love these things. Maybe I should send them to you so you could get them done. Uh, Rob says to personalize them. I could put my name on them. Here lies Jonathan. Good riddance. I probably can't fit all that on there. But someone who actually can freehand and write, they could do it. Uh, Jonathan's head is so big he needed multiple gravestones. We're glad he's gone. Um, I mean, I don't know. Something like that. Um, when in doubt, I always poke fun at myself. Because uh, if I'm not going to... Well, the real reason is I do it so it takes the sting out of it when other people do it. That's what it is. It's self-preservation. I'm used to being the uh, butt of a joke. Uh, and there we are. <laughs> it helps. Rob says to use um, inside... Joke names, Easter eggs, use a black tech pen. If only I had. Uh, but that's actually, that's an interesting idea. My writing is not so great, though. Uh, so I might need to have someone else do it. I wish I wish I could write, like, in pseudo-calligraphy or something. Because uh, that would be awesome. But my handwriting is terrible. I've, the, no joke, I've actually been told at least, I don't know, a dozen times in my life that I should become a doctor to validate my handwriting. And there you have that. Um... Jamie says, I would 100% get a pen to write on them and go with puns like Disney's Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Uh, so it's funny. I'm not one for rides and I don't like scary stuff. But I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos over the past, I don't know, year and a half of like behind the scenes content for uh, Disney rides and attractions. So where people go and they explain all the stuff and the changes with it all. And the Haunted Mansion has such really good stuff and low light videos of how they do it and the rides and everything. And all that kind of stuff. So that would be kind of fun. Um, I don't know. I still think putting ones on here that just say how rubbish I am would be really awesome, though. Uh, and I think it would be really funny, but it would probably just make me laugh. Uh, and everyone else would be like, why is that so mean to him? And I'd be like, because I deserve it, you. Uh, but that's probably a story for my therapist. <laughs> um, I've actually been working on something else that's going to have Jamie excited. So let me pull it up. Okay, so no one knows I've been doing this, but I've been slowly working on, can you guess what? Here, I'll show you another piece. This isn't going to help you at all, which is why I'm showing it to you. Any guesses? What am I working on? Can you tell? How about one more? Uh... Something that's maybe not stuck together. No, oh, wait, none of them are. Can anyone guess? I would pretend to have the Jeopardy theme, but I don't want to get busted uh, for copyright infringement. Any guesses? Come on. I know you can think of it. Anyone? Jamie says smoking. While that is legal, it's not something I'm participating in, Jamie, just because you're in Europe. Come on now. I'm giving it all away here. Another piece. Come on. You, you have to have figured it out by now. Lots of clues. Can anyone figure out what project I'm working on? Okay, I'm going to reveal it. Last chance. Three, two, one. Guess you all gave up. Okay. <laughs> That's right, the industrial chimney. So, uh, last week was it? Was it only last week? I did a poll and I asked all of you what I should work on next after the tent barracks. And... No, Jamie, don't be... I have some words for you, but I'm, I can't say them on the live stream. Uh, <laughs> I have some gifts for you, too, but I'll send those after. <laughs> uh, so, I did a poll. <laughs> you bit, Nathan says I was busy yelling at co-workers. Well, they're not important. We're important. What project is more important than those co-workers? This one, Nathan. Priorities, man. Come on. First, you're like, what the hand solo cup? And now this, jeez, man. 
Uh, so we did the poll where I was asking what I should work on next. And someone, <clears throat> dreamy, uh, was like, how about that chimney? I want to see what you do with smoke effects and everything. I'm probably, probably not going to get a whole lot of it. It's going to be a clean chimney is my decision. But um, I went ahead and I spray painted it. And because someone, Mark, uh, had told me that they didn't like painting before assembly because they didn't like getting stuff done, painting things that weren't going to actually be, um, you know, needed to be painted, uh, I did something controversial for myself. And I didn't paint the other side. And I think this won't show, but normally I would just in case, like there was a gap and you could see inside. So, um, uh, <laughs> That is a uh, one thing I did, so I was a little more cautious with me. But it's weird because, and you might not be able to tell, but the, at first I was really annoyed. If you look on the bottom, am I gonna have to put my phone on again? I might. Um, where you might not, again, you might not be able to see her, but I was really annoyed because I wasn't getting great coverage. So right here is a little lighter. It's not just a lighting; it actually is a little bit lighter. It didn't get as great coverage from the spray paint, and um. I was going to go over it again, and I didn't at first because this red, it's um, it's upstairs, that's what it is. Uh, it's a colonial red from, I don't know, Krylon or, uh, you know, one of those. Not Krylon, it's the other one um, that you can get at, um, well, heck, you get it at Home Depot here in the States. Um, and I can't think of the name, but anyway, it's, it's dirt cheap. But the problem with it is... It takes forever to dry. It's really tacky, and I've had it mess up a lot of stuff on me. So I'm hesitant to use it. It's like it's a thicker paint or whatever. So I went lighter, and it was windy, which I wasn't expecting. It wasn't supposed to be wet. I was getting breezes. It was just blowing stuff around. But I kind of like it because it's almost like it has a gradient on it. So I'm going to tell people from now on that was intentional. Uh, and then I'm also working on, okay, get your guessing hats on again. Another project. So we'll start off with useless pieces. Come on, guess in the chat and see what it is or guess in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. So there's this, what could this be? It's another things in the basement kit. Any guesses? Okay, we'll go to the next one. Hang on. Anybody? That's the reverse. I'll give you a moment. Nathan says outhouse. And Nathan guessed for the other one. Optical input output modules for CPC drawers that don't exist, so I can't make images for them. Okay, final piece. If Anyone? Any guesses? Things in the basement? I'll give you a moment. And then I'll reveal. Three... Two, one, contact. Archbridge. <laughs> I said I wasn't doing any more Japanese stuff. And yet, here we go. <laughs> so, the Archbridge. And I, at first, I was just going to, I was like, it's a red bridge. I'm going to do it all red. And then I realized that actually the walkway, uh, and this is a little darker than I really want it to be. Walkway is not. It's it's wooden. Um, and in all of your pictures, and it doesn't have to be like his stuff, but all of his pictures show it as being like really a light, like a sandy kind of color, I guess. Khakis. Um, and I was like, but I want it to be more wooden. So I did brown. I'll, I'll you know, dry brush it. I got to pop out these little pieces here, the little squares that you see. Uh, and so I separated, did red and that. So that's half the battle right there. So we've been making some progress on that as well and um i think that's no that's not all the stuff i have to tell you about is it no it's not okay let's have some coffee mm. what are all you drinking actually so we know that rob is drinking coffee in his hand solo mug what are the rest of you drinking anything good comment below let us know. Love to know what you're drinking. Um, I have some other things to share with you. So first, did you know that you can go ahead and leave comments on our website, wargamingrecon.com? So you can leave comments on any of the stuff that gets posted on there, whether it's a, a podcast, 
uh, with the show notes um, you go and you click on or any of the articles and stuff. And I'm used to people not commenting on there, uh, which is weird because sometimes they do. And so I want to just catch up and read some comments that people have made. So the first thing I want to share is from an article that was posted just as I pull it up. It's called State of Wargaming Club's 21st Century Perspective. And so this, once it opens, I can read the comments to you. So this was posted by Arthur Thomas Corbett, who actually is no longer writing for us. He just found that uh, there's not enough content for what he thought he um, wanted to write about. Uh, but Mike Payne says, I'm looking forward to more like this. Uh, Mike Payne is a fella who likes to comment on things. Uh, you can find him over on the Barbarians uh, Facebook group. And he runs amazing games. I call him a superstar GM, although he hates it. But that's not why I call him that. It's just because I think he's a superstar GM. For the article 2019's goal, 350 figures painted by the one and only Nathan Whitchurch. Uh, Mike says, I set goals for myself, but no deadlines. I'd say you had a great, good year overall. All that hobby work and myself and getting this blog out too. You guys put on some great looking games at council. And I'm looking forward to more of this blog and stuff. Quoting Jonathan, keep on gaming. And then we have from another article called that new year's feeling you're gonna see a recurring theme here with my commenting <laughs> for a while anyway um just while i wait for it to open up there you go so that new year's feeling feel in rather written by <coughs> paul allen Mike says, Paul, nice post. I have more projects than I'll ever compete, so I just plug along and finish when I can. Enjoying the hobby in some way comes first with me, so I don't set guide uh, deadlines or worry much about what gets done. Lots of good advice on this one. I may even take some looking forward to reading more. And Paul wrote back, hey, Mike, glad you enjoyed it. My first thing of the new year was to clear the desk. I'm finishing one mini before going elsewhere. I'm also really tempted to look into random projects more as well. I'll be giving it a go when I finish what's on the table already. Happy New Year. You'll notice clearing the desk has become uh, really uh, a common goal, I think, for people, especially now during the pandemic, as we're all kind of home and we're trying to go through projects. And you can tell the fact that, like, I got, as I'm dropping, I got fences and bridges and chimneys and all the stuff and other things I'm working on that... Uh, it's a goal not just for everyone else, but it's a goal for me too. And so I think that people really are trying to go ahead and get caught up. And then we've had some really great articles about uh, getting rid of things that one doesn't need anymore, uh, you know, really scaling back, about prioritizing. So all sorts of authors have been writing about this on our website at wargamingrecon.com. And I just, I think this is really important stuff to highlight. Um, so the Muses Miniatures Musings Prepping to Paint Your Miniature by Carol Pandolf. This is a second in her series where she talks about uh, pinning and all the work, like removing flash and all that kind of stuff. Great article, actually. Mike says, great tips, Carol. I picked up a Bones Mini and primed it, and it got tacky. I won't do that again. And Carol said, I actually found out this firsthand when I primed the wings of the Clockwork Dragon. Lucky for me, after I painted and sealed them, the tackiness went away. So that's really a good tip there from Carol. Uh, that sometimes it might be tacky as you're working on stuff, but that as you go and get it done uh, afterwards, the tackiness disappears, which is good because you don't want to be picking stuff up and it still feels tacky. And that's kind of like my experience with using this red. It was tacky uh, when I'd be picking it up and things would stick, it'd be that way for a long, long time. It just It was annoying as heck. Uh, so that's something I found was uh, useful to know. And then the article, Goals, Motivation, and Progress, The Road to 350 by Nathan Whitchurch. As well, we have uh, a couple comments. So Mike says, I like the don't be a hoarder goal. So far, not doing so good, but a little at a time, I'm moving stuff out and bringing in less. Got to get down, get it down to bringing in nothing, but that might be tough. And KG Smith 55 says, I know it's really tough, but focusing on a project and seeing it through really does contribute to reducing the lit pile. And this is in all caps, as long as, uh, 
and they say you also avoid the various shiny new objects that will appear during the year. 350 figures is a great goal, though you might raise it to 365, which is an average of a figure per day. It works with a calendar. And so uh, it, it was really nice for me to see this kind of stuff put into writing about, um, like I said, scaling back and not bringing in as much, because that's something I made a conscious decision to do a couple years ago. And I'd feel weird that going to conventions and going to game days and, and being at game stores and everyone's picking up something, you know, they have a project, they have whatever. And I know these people like intellectually and logically, I know these people have their own lead piles at home, right? They have all this stuff to do. Uh, and I wouldn't get anything because I'd be like, I get all this stuff. I don't want to spend the money on it. I have all this stuff. I need to do this stuff first. I can't just keep bringing stuff in. But I felt like the odd man out, right? Because everyone else was doing it. And I was like, well, maybe I should be. And especially with the show, with all the stuff we do here at Working in Recon, I felt like, well, maybe we need a, I need to be doing it to get content for people. But I knew, good morning, Mike. Uh, I knew consciously that like I would feel that way and I would do it and I'd get the stuff with the intention of doing it for the show. But then, of course, it has to go to the bottom of the pile. So even if it's for the show, there's all this other stuff that has to get covered for the show first. And so I was like, no, I'm not getting new stuff. And this is just how it is. But still, I felt like, oh, like something was wrong, I guess, that I, I should be better. I should be doing something differently. And so for me, especially now, it's really nice to see, although some time has passed, that people are, you know, really get into this and, and really focusing on what they have and trying to get through those projects before they get new stuff. So I think that's really, really smart of people uh, to do that. And it makes me feel happy that I am not left alone on that as well and i'll just share a couple of the comments that we received on youtube because we do put these up on youtube and i put these up yesterday uh, i put up all the ones up to including yesterday's on youtube yesterday so that was um something i wanted to make sure that i did and let me um now we have more comments where'd they go Sorry, I got a um, YouTube normally lets just shows them all in a spot, but it's not showing them right now. So I go to um, go through and find. So I think it's this one. So for our pandemic coffee break from March 31st. On YouTube, Patrick wrote in, Speaking of the Cinematic Inspiration episode, I had a couple of movies. I listened to the audio version on the go, couldn't find the show on here, meaning YouTube, to comment directly. That I wanted to mention, in the Cold War category, Firefox, 1980 or 81, with Clint Eastwood. In the miscellaneous genre mixing category, The Final Countdown, with Kirk Douglas and Michael Sheen. And, come on, open up all the way, because there's more, he says. Come on, YouTube. You can do it. You can do it. And I don't want to hear you. Or me, rather. Uh, so, Kirk Douglas and Martin Sheen, 1980. Not sure if you've seen either of those. I have not. But I could see the plot of Firefox as inspiration for an espionage adventure. And the final countdown as kind of a homebrew mashup of some naval roles just for kicks. So, thank you for the comments, Patrick. Um, yeah, that would be interesting. I, I've always... I know of the final countdown. I know it involves a, um, a carrier. It's like nuclear war or something, I believe, right? Um, referring to the final countdown for a nuclear war to start. So I've always kind of viewed it. I guess it's sci-fi-ish, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, so maybe I'll add that to the list. We'll see if it's on Netflix. We can do a watch party at some point. Uh, but I think that's about all we have time for today. So thank you all for watching today's Pandemic Coffee Break. Uh, remember, tonight we have the watch party on Netflix, so I will put stuff up on our Facebook page so you can see it there. I already put instructions for what you need to do. Make sure you have Chrome and go to NetflixParty.com and download the free plugin and get it installed and everything. So do that so you can participate and join us. Uh, Rob says, I've run Final Countdown Scenario, uh, referring to Final Countdown. Uh, so make sure you do that. If you want to get any Too Fat Lardy stuff, today's the last day. To get physical stuff, go ahead and order it now. Don't miss out. Uh, and they are doing a discount on um, Chain of Command right now. And I believe they will be on Sharps Practice. Although I've been saying that for a week and I haven't heard anything more about it. But they leaked it. So I don't know. That's a thing. Um, and then 
Um, tonight's watch party, really just a big thing. And just, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. So tomorrow's Friday, April 3rd. And look forward to having you join me here on the Pandemic Coffee Break at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so we can chat and all that kind of stuff and see what's going on. Be sure to have your beverages ready tomorrow. I'll probably be back to my decaf for Old Grey Hot, but right now I got some Dunkin' Donuts iced. Mm. Iced dessert. Good stuff. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you tonight at the Pandemic Watch. Oh, not Pandemic. I'll call it the Pandemic Watch Party, I guess, at the uh, Netflix Watch Party tonight for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I know Mike Payne's looking forward to it, right, Mike? And um, that'll be good. Please be sure with the pandemic happening that you are paying attention to what the experts say, the doctors, the scientists, the people who know what they're talking about, not Karen on Facebook, <laughs> not any other randos or politicians or whatever. Listen to the experts, please. Please be kind and good both to yourself and to others. Please take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Please try to be happy. Uh, I know yesterday we talked about how people feel that what we're doing here at Wargaming Recon is helping with mental health. And that's a thing that we want to really push for this year. We're doing a big mental health push in 2020, and it seems like we all need it. <laughs> so uh, let us know what we can be doing differently. Oh, and actually, I have one question for all of you uh, before we go. So yesterday the discussion came up about the set of rules battle group. It's World War II, uh, 15 millimeter rules. And it came up the fact that we don't talk about it a whole lot anymore. We did for a little bit. Adrian used to talk about it a little bit on the podcast. And it's been my understanding that as, in general anyway, um, you guys and ladies aren't that interested in coverage about it. You might like the game. You might be interested in the rules, but you haven't really spoken up to us about it. So please let us know if you want us to do more battle group coverage, because if you want it, we will do it. So, but we need to know that you want it. Uh, and that's just, that's how it goes. Uh, Rob says USS Nimitz goes back to December 6, 1941 about final countdown. Okay. That makes sense. Time travel. That's why I think it's sci-fi. And Mike says was not ready today. Maybe tomorrow, 10 30 a.m. Mike, if you are available, we'd love for you to be in the chat with us here for the pandemic coffee break. So that's what we have today. Tomorrow we'll have more stuff. What it'll be, I don't know. But it's interesting. Every day is something different and kind of fun. I still haven't bought that Bunnies and Burrows, but I do intend to do it. Uh, so that'll be good. And I look forward to hearing back from all of you. Um, be kind, be good. Hope all, all your families are well and you are well. And that's what we got. So no matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how much time you're spending thinking, man, I wish I had a spoon because it hurts more. You know that you have to. You gotta. You need to. That's right. Keep on gaming. Thanks, everyone. Be well.